business owner and Louise is on a bit of a jolly this week. So I'm Diane and um, this week's episode, I'm joined by Amar Ghosh, um, who is the CEO of software giant Zenmade. So welcome Amar, really lovely to see you and thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a long time coming, so I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, no, me, me too. So now, you know, you're known for being the CEO of Zenmade and it's a fantastic software solution for cleaning business owners. But I'd like in this podcast, if we can, to dig a little bit deeper into the man behind the business, if that's OK. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, where should I start? <laughs> Okay, well, let, let, let's start. Can, can we talk about your experience in the cleaning industry? Because I think that leads to how Zenmade came about. So, you know, I, I've looked and, and I can see you started a cleaning business way back in 2012. Is that right? Yeah, so I, I ran a cleaning business for I think it was about 14 months or so from kind of like the idea to launching it, which happened like pretty quickly within like a couple of months. So we were running it. It was like actually live and doing cleanings for maybe about a year or so before uh before i moved into like in into zen made so i came across like an online um an online like thread or um just like series of posts about starting a cleaning business and i uh, didn't really think too much of it. i thought it was interesting but like looked at the first like couple of days of like doing the work and was kind of like ah that seems like way too technical, which is quite funny now that I run like a software company, but I literally looked at it. It was like, oh, setting up a website really seems like a lot of like a lot of work. And then uh, I just had a friend that um, that I was talking to randomly, like maybe two weeks later, who was really interested in that side of things. And so I started peppering him with questions about all of the man management, like, how are you going to hire people? How are you going to get like clients? You know, what's what are you like? What's going to happen with like something goes wrong? And by by the end of it he was like yeah, i don't want to i don't want to do any of that stuff and so the next morning he sent me like a text and uh was like hey do you want to partner on this so i can just focus on like what i want to focus on and like you can focus on like you know this other stuff and so that was essentially how i how i found my way like into a uh into a maid service and so yeah after about 14 months we shut that down for like for a variety of uh, of reasons and uh yeah Another friend so approached me to so start. You kind, of, yeah. you kind of started immediately looking at the challenges that the business would face. Your your, your then soon to be partner was kind of like, oh no, I've just realised that this is harder. I need I need some help. Was that kind of how it happened? <laughs> yeah and not it was not a conscious thing right like i was literally i was genuinely just asking him like questions like now i'm much more like intentional about like things like back then i was just genuinely curious and just didn't know any better you know so um yeah i i was i was just asking him yeah maybe a natural problem solver and, and yeah just kind of came in yeah yeah so, so well, what, one of the things is that like it's it's funny because like i consider myself to be very very lazy and that was the way that we kind of started the maid service and i've kind of like started all of like the businesses so our goal was to like not book any customers over the phone not go to anyone's houses and to keep everything as streamlined as humanly possible even if we gave up a large percentage of like of our margin in order to like to to, to do that right and so um yeah, like I was just asking him what I felt were like more logical questions about things that would logically like go wrong. And yeah, I, I don't know, one thing led to another. Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting you said about being natural, la naturally lazy. I think lazy people actually make really good entrepreneurs because we yeah. have to set our businesses up to work so that we don't have to mm -hmm. do Exactly, exactly. Like, I, I think it's actually like, because I'm like quite lazy and have um, ADHD. And so like, I've actually like over time, I've learned that those are like my biggest, um, not like superpowers, because like, I have a lot better traits, but they actually make me think about problems in a unique way compared to many, even many other entrepreneurs, like not every entrepreneur uh, is like the same, the same way, right? Lots of people are way more like organized or way better at completely different things that allows them to be a great entrepreneur, right? And so like, everyone's kind of different. But for me, like for the longest time, it was a drawback. And now I'm like, oh, no, actually, like, I think about most problems quite differently than most because of it yeah you have to have strategies don't you to mm -hmm. make happen and having strategy in a business is key isn't it setting things up yeah 
So, so do you think the cleaning industry itself is a, is a good breeding ground for entrepreneurs? Do you think the skills that we learn in this industry can, can help us in other businesses? Um, yeah, I definitely think, think the academy. I think that um, in a lot of ways, uh, cleaning businesses, like domestic cleaning businesses, are like uh, a simplified version in some ways of like lots of other more complicated services but really they're not any more complicated right like really cleaning is just as difficult as any other like any other like industry and uh and and etc but i think that almost every business you're essentially a service business right like zenmate is essentially a service business it's just our people happy day to day logging into our software versus like month to month when you guys leave like leave their homes for example right but everyone's ultimately in a service business and you ultimately get paid for having like happy customers unless you're comcast in the us or I don't know, like the rail services and like in the UK where you just don't have a choice about who you're who you're riding with and they don't care, you know, um, unless you're one of those like those companies, um, you're in the business of providing like great service. And so I think that um, that running a maid service just translates directly to so many other things. Um, I also think that running a maid service is quite um, it's quite low margin because it's easy for people to enter, right? Like anyone can go to like their local Walmart or Tesco or whatever it is, buy a bunch of cleaning supplies and like say that they're a maid service, start offering cleaning services, right? And that'll be under the table. But, you know, anyone can do that. And so that makes for a very, very like competitive uh, cutthroat like industry. So if you start as a maid service owner and then you move into something else, the margins and other things, oftentimes it's tougher to make that initial jump and to get started in the business. But then once you have that initial like kind of thing, it feels a lot like a lot easier. So I've definitely seen a lot of um, of, of uh, entrepreneurs like start out as maid service owners and then move into in, into something else. So like it can be a stepping stone, but I've also seen people that have had their cleaning business for, for 20 or more like years and it's like it's a family business for them, right? So like, you know, that that's the nice thing about having this kind of business um, or like choosing to do a lifestyle kind of business is you can turn it into what you want to, right? If you're intentional about how you build your business, you can figure out which way to go. Yeah, I agree with you. And one of the nicest things about particularly the domestic cleaning industry is it can be a lifestyle business, can't it? It can fit with family and other things. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be at sort of six o'clock at night. It can be nine till three almost, can't it? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I think I think I think like all businesses, it can be really tough to start that way that I think it's hard to see that in the very beginning. I think unless you have experience before, if you've done it before, that it's a lot easier to like do to do faster. But as a first time like owner, don't expect to get to that like nine to three until you're a couple years into the business, because you'll want to essentially get the ball rolling before you kind of like take your, your your foot off the gas and like on the brakes like a little bit. So it's kind of about putting the work in and building the systems up and putting them in place first so that you can work less hours in a day, but get a lot more done than like the usual, like the usual entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think like with any business, it, like you said, that expectation of, you know, you're not going to be able to have a lifestyle business until you've created it. And, and that's, that's your job yeah. in the first couple of years, isn't it, to create that? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because um, I always say that, that like, so I'm not very systematized, right? That, like, I have a really organized notion only because I have a great assistant who works with me and keeps everything organized. So I can ask for any information that I want and I get it right back, but I never go into, like, in, into, the, into the notion. But um, so, you know, that the point of that is that I'm not very, not very systematized. But what I realized at some point is that the systems are actually what set you free as the entrepreneur, that like the reason that I'm able to not be systematized is because there's so many systems that exist in Zenmate. So everything else just goes on around me without me having to actually do anything. And so that's like the goal of every maid service owner as well is you want your office staff just operating, sending like your team, like dispatching your team out to like to a Appointments and cleanings just going on without you, the owner, actually having to be there. And if you want to stop in and you want to help out with scheduling or you want to do the marketing or you want to focus on opening your next location or you want to go home and hang out with your family, 
you want all of those to be like to be to be options to you right like an ideal business is built so you have the option to do any of those things not you have to show up every single day or like you know a cleaner being out isn't going to get rescheduled or whatever it might be so but it takes time to get there Absolutely. And being your own boss, you know, that's about creating choice for yourself, isn't it? But you've got to really yeah. be focused on that's what you're actually doing and not just creating a job for yourself, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, yeah. So I want to talk Good. about how it kind of led into Zen Made. And I've got this kind of picture that was it literally you and a friend writing some code in a room together? How, how did it actually happen? Um, so close. So like, essentially, I, I had another friend who I was talking to a lot of the time. And so he approached me and was essentially like, hey, you guys built your own like your own website and your own little scheduling tool and like reminders for the website. I think that I can take that and I can turn it into like into a software product. And so he, he had like come to me a couple of months before that um when he knew that i was thinking about kind of letting go of the maid service and so he had already kind of approached me and just been like hey i think we should do a software company together because you can sell and market it and like i can do do like the coding and so we essentially decided on this idea and moved like moved forward with it and at the time it was just you know we'd found a couple of solutions that were on the market but all of the ones that were specific to the cleaning industry were really old and like an out dated and weren't very good and then the ones that, that that were like okay software none of them were specific to the cleaning industry so we kind of felt like we were like okay like we could use some of these other like these other tools but it's not exactly like what we like what we wanted and so we ended up just building out kind of what we wanted and so yeah essentially i, I had another friend that had just been kind of watching that from like from the sidelines and um and and essentially like approached me so then from there so yeah i mean there was two of us we were living in palo alto so about as cliche as it possibly gets right like right around the corner from where you know steve jobs used to live and like and all of like and all of that stuff but we weren't like taking any money it was just the two of us and so um yeah it, it was like for a couple of months it was probably four or five nights a week that i would go over to his house at maybe 9 30 anywhere from 9 30 to 10 30 at night when he was getting back from stanford university because he was doing his phd at the time and then i would be working on like marketing or content or whatever and he would just be coding away and then be turning to me and asking questions about like you know initial product decisions and stuff like that and so that that's where we started and that was almost 10 years ago at this point that was like nine years and like eight months ago or something crazy so yeah um that that's how how zen made ended up um and ended up like starting and that's excite an exciting place to be, isn't it? I mean, probably at the time you didn't think of it as being as exciting as it is now, maybe. But that's that's real revolution time, isn't it? Creating something from scratch. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just it's turned into just something bigger than like than we ever could could have like could could have imagined. So like, yeah, it was it was a different kind of exciting back then, right? Because for both of us, it was like our first real thing, right? So you know, we weren't experienced entrepreneurs before uh, before like starting this um the, the, this company together, and so yeah, that made it really exciting and really uncertain. I mean, probably until year four, or year five, we weren't really sure if we were going to make it as like as as a business. So you know it, it's kind of crazy to think how far we've come yeah it's it's and and people sort of think oh you know zen made is amazing and it, and it's a really big business now but yeah that, that those early days and those early four years is what you're saying that that's what it took mm -hmm. to build it yeah exactly yeah brilliant and then obviously continued changes so i like the fact that you you had experience in a particular industry and the challenges and and i think you were you weren't sort of phased by the challenges before you went in because it seems to me like you were prepared for them but you then came up with a solution that was going to solve at least some of those challenges yeah well so what we did was was what we had earlier than anyone else is so we launched in early 2013 and so that was right after it had just become 
quite easy for you to add in SMS messaging into right. any like SaaS platform. So before that, you had to have a huge team of engineers. And so only like the biggest softwares had this built in and it was buggy. It was built by them. If one engineer left, then they might not know how the thing like worked or like or whatever. And so we launched ZenMade right after Twilio was just like, hey, you can just like use our API and send out text messages. And so we essentially just beat a bunch of people in the industry to the punch. And so for, for just long enough for us to just get off the ground with a very simple scheduler and then a couple of intelligent text messages and emails. And that was like the entire concept that ZenMade was based around at the beginning. Of course, now it does like it does so much more. But that's, that's how we started in the very beginning was we just got our foothold with like one feature that people hadn't seen before. They hadn't seen done well before. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, I started my cleaning business back in 2008 and I remember looking for solutions back then. And mm -hmm. the only option really was to buy some software outright or to write, you know, have it written for you. There wasn't the online solutions that there were then. Yeah. But I know the ones that I looked at, what I found so frustrating was they obviously weren't written for the industry. Um, and yeah. they weren't written for how a particular domestic cleaning business works in the way that, you know, you move your staff around different clients. And it just, yeah. Whereas I think because of your experience, you've been able to tailor it, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, what's, what's interesting is I think that I think that in the beginning, I thought that it that it had to do more with my with my experience. But I actually think in some ways, <clears throat> in some ways, my experience led me astray just because I dealt with things differently than other people in the industry. So I actually feel like I'm much more proud of having developed and the team having developed like almost as like a cultural um, sort of like development has developed like a good feedback system and a good way of listening to our users and listening to our user base to be constantly making improvements, right? Because like what you see now in the software, I mean, there are things in there that like, I'm not even aware of, like I go in and I'm like, oh, what's this? Like, this is quite cool. Like I didn't, I didn't know that we did this, right? Um, and so it's interesting for Ted to like finally have the company at like at that, um, at that like sort of like sort of, sort of level. But the, the point to that is that like, I'm not the one actually driving the innovation anymore, right? Like it's actually like, you know, in the team's culture to take feedback from our users and to figure out how we can better help our users without getting in the way of what's already working and how do we just keep making adjustments and improvements. You know, like we're still adding calendar views right now as people are pointing out like, hey, you know, I'm at this size, I'm trying to look at it this way and like this is what I'm trying to do and it's just not working. Right. And it's like, oh, that that makes perfect sense. Thank you for sharing. Like, let's see what we can do about that. Right. But these are the like, you know, we're working with people that are at sizes that are literally 10, 15 times the size that I ever was in my maid service. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the key for any business, though, isn't it? And, and is to keep learning and to keep sort of adjusting yeah. and <clears throat> need to go through. And I think that applies to the cleaning industry, to the to your software, to every business, really, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um yeah, I mean, I think with the cleaning business, things are going to stay a lot more steady, but you still need to have a pulse on like how things are going with your clients. And if people are getting less happy over time with your service, then you need to do something about that, right? It's always going to be cyclical, right? It's always going to go back and forth between like, do you need to provide better service? Do you need to do better hiring? Do you need to do better, like better marketing? And you're going to do one. And it's like a constant game of whack-a-mole, but you do it for long enough. And eventually you yeah. get all the systems in place and then like the business begins to get really consistent and your team knows how to deal with these ups and downs and stuff. But like, I don't know, to me, that's the beautiful thing of building a business like that. That's why I'm still working on this business, you know, 10 years, like 10 years later, because like I still get to work on new challenges every day. Right. Like I'm still excited by like the product decisions that I get to make or the marketing challenges that like that we have now, like at our size and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to you got to know why you're doing it, too. Yeah, I, I love the whack-a-mole analogy because it's true. It's <laughs> that, That's your job as a business owner is to solve problems. That's that's literally yeah. what your only job job isn't it um is to solve yeah. all, the, all the problems and to keep innovating and and facing new challenges but it can be really stressful <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it's like it's one of one of those like harsh like harsh realities of just like if you have a problem that's holding up your business and like a week or a month later you still have the same problem holding up your business like 
ultimately it's on you, the business owner. It doesn't matter which person in the company is supposed to like to get it fixed, right? Like ultimately it's on you because like the entire business will grind to a halt, right? And like that, that's one that um, it's like the ultimate, the ultimate like accountability or like responsibility. And I don't know, at least for me, like that, that's like, I don't know. I feel like my life is so much better because I think about my life that way. And I think that's like a really like, um, under-recognized or under-appreciated thing about being an entrepreneur. So I just noticed that most entrepreneurs just take way more control of like of, of their lives, right? At least, I don't know about you, but like I've definitely seen that with like the DCBN members and like, you know, other people in like in our industry is just as a general rule of thumb, they're, they're just like more, you know, kind of like, let's go get this done than like your average person, you know? Yeah, that's 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 a sign of an entrepreneur, isn't it? Is that's what you're yeah. there, is to just yeah sort things and and taking responsibility yeah. as well. It's a big responsibility having a business sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's really inspiring to see. And um, I think I, I heard you guys talking about this on one of the recent episodes. But um, it's so um, it's so like women. Um, like like driven right there, there's so many women like in the in, in the industry and stuff and so that that's just another another like great reason to be um to be like helping out here right is it it's like not like under under like served but um you know there's just a way higher percentage of female entrepreneurs in this industry compared to so many others and if this is like you know a stepping stone industry for like for some people or for a lot of people then like that that's really important yeah, definitely. So I'm got, I've got a question for you here now. So what has been yeah. your worst mistake in business? Worst mistake in business. So we did a redesign, I think in 2017 for Zenmade. And we just, we, we had a couple of major miscommunication like errors and um, yeah, just made a variety of mistakes. And when we ended up uh, going live with the with the redesign, like at that point, um, we ended up like taking down the software for 48, 72 hours um, during like the middle of like of, of the week. But in a lot of ways, that mistake is I feel I feel like there's a very clear like before and after in Zen made right of like before that time and after that time. And it was like that forced us to like grow up as a company. And like now we have so many like different reasons that like that, spe like that specific scenario would never happen again, but not just, oh, we're trying to prevent that scenario. It's like, we've got a bunch of like checks and like balances in place before anything goes live and like, and stuff like, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely the worst, the, the worst mistake. Um, I mean, we had something like, it was something like 35 or 40 percent of people who used us when we took that redesign live like weren't using us six months like later so we had like a massive like amount of people that like that 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 left us in like the immediate months like months like after that and it felt like we were essentially having to restart or to like to re like to restart of build when you actually look at it back on like zen made's like all-time graph you like don't even notice it right like it was just like three months or something that we like went down a bit but like for us everything was on was on fire but yeah that's the biggest um the the, the biggest mistake and uh like, like i said so many systems in place so many things learned from uh from from that we spent a lot of time digging digging through like what went wrong there uh, brilliant and, and actually well, it's not brilliant it's, it's, i can imagine yeah. at the time it wasn't brilliant at all but actually because you've made the changes and you've realized what the actual mistakes were and, and i think that's mm. and it's it's also not catastrophizing about it at the time it probably was yeah. awful but actually you've realized in the scheme of things it it just made you change things and you've moved forward so yeah exactly and and, and change things for like the better right like much much better right like everything we do is so much more stable because we made that mistake and because the like like because the mistake ended up being like being catastrophic right um so yeah it's one of those weird weird things where like yeah at the time it felt like the end of like of the of, of the company but it was like essentially what happened was like everyone that was using the software at the time was really unhappy but then everyone that essentially signed up when we were in the middle of this they all got the new version of like of zen made with this massive redesign and were really happy so we like saw all of our current users be like okay we're out 
and then like our new usage just skyrocketed and so you know it, it ended up like working out but not really in the way that we wanted that's one that like I would like a do over on that, you know. I'd like to keep all the lessons that I learned, but I'd like to go back and do do that launch over. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> that makes sense. That was so. So, uh, uh, that's what are you most proud of then? So, obviously, we, we've we've been really honest about your your worst mistakes. So, what are you most proud of? Um, I think the Zenmade like culture. I so so for those that, that don't know, at Zenmade we have quite a few people on our team that worked in the industry previously. Um, that were either like owned their own made services, um, like Maria or uh, like Vicky and Laura were office managers for made services before joining the team. And then like you know, if you guys are interested in um, in joining Zenmade, you will get the offer to do an optimization call with someone from our team and quite a few of the people that actually give those optimization calls are customers of Zenmade who we just pay for a couple hours a week to do like demos when like when they're they're available so oftentimes you'll actually sign up and be talking directly to another um, another made service owner either current or like or former or like a former like former office manager and I think that that's probably what I'm like most proud of that like initially i had that connection that strong connection to the industry and i think that really pulled us through the first like first couple of years that i was at all of like the industry conferences and conventions and stuff and then at some point you know just like you know, i think when i was in like my young 20s i was willing to fly halfway across the world to show up to a convention for four days or whatever and like you know I just can't do that anymore, right? Like it just, uh, that's just uh, it's a bit, bit tougher, tougher on like on, on the body and stuff. But um, but but I, I think that what I'm most proud of is us as a company just being able to stay close to the industry and to stay close to the people that are actually on the ground and like using the software that particularly like new developers that join our team are always like blown away when they go, okay, well, like, you know, do we think a customer would want like the button to be here or here? And we're like, well, let's just ask them. And then we'll tag like four actual Zenmade users in our Slack channel, right? So like in our actual like workspace, we'll just directly tag made service owners who will come in and quickly give us like, give us feedback. Or of course we can go to our Facebook group, like the inner circle, we can ask for, um, for, for feedback there. But the fact that like, that's like essentially codified into, um, into the company, I think is something that's gonna make Zenmade like special um for like for for a long a long time so you effectively built a team around you that are completely customer service focused not just those whose job it is so that's uh, yeah exactly exactly we, we try try to think about it as like everyone is is like customer facing yeah oh brilliant i like that so one of the things that i've noticed about the industry is that sometimes the people yeah. running businesses within it sometimes feel that they're not good enough or maybe there's others that seem to be doing better than them we might even have people listening now or kind of like yes it all sounds fantastic but i don't know that i can do it and well, you know, imposter syndrome i think it's called but you know is that something yeah. you've come across is it something you've ever struggled with uh, yeah so I, I i've struggled with it um i I think I've dealt with it better than better than most that I don't, I don't think that I really feel feel it like too um, too much. Um, I, I did I did a little bit when I was when I was younger, but the like the, the, the way the way that I've always seen it is so first of all like comparing yourself to others like others just don't matter right it just doesn't matter if like someone else gets there a hundred times faster than you it makes no difference right to me what what i have always thought about is just like when we were working on zenmade is i always looked at it and just thought if we're able to make 10 or fifteen thousand dollars like a month and i'm the one who's doing like most of the work right we have like an existing product and i'm doing most of the work I'll be able to essentially work my own job, but pay myself more money than I would ever make, you know, at like at, at, at another, like at another company. 
And to me, that just seems like like a big win, right? For like for my co-founder, that wasn't like that wasn't really enough, right? He wanted to work on like bigger things. He wanted to work on things that have like more potential or potential to change the world or whatever. And for him, Zenmade was more of like a ticket out, right? As in like if this does well for us, then like I can go and I can work on these other things. And that's exactly what he went and did, right? And we're still great friends, but he left after I think four years. Right. And so at that point, I essentially had to go full time on like on Zenmade, um, didn't feel qualified, didn't have my co-founder with me. So I was definitely struggling with like with imposter syndrome, like imposter syndrome then. But on the point of just like having your own sort of goal, like your own just like, you know, if my maid service gets to 300K a year, then like, you know, I can work 20 hours a week and take a vacation to Spain every, every year. And, you know, like that's like my definition of winning, right? It's really important to just realize that everyone's definition of winning is completely different. But once you sort of know what that number is, whether you're young twenties and it's like a hundred K a year, or whether, you know, you're maybe late forties and you're looking for like 400, like 400 K a year, whatever, like it might, like it might be, the way that I've always thought about it is that however long it takes for you to build your business to get to like that point, it'll be worth it, right? That whether it takes you 10 years and for 10 years, you're just grinding. And this is, of course, assuming that you're able to like make ends meet, whether you're working another job or whether it's just like, you know, you're scraping by in the business, but not actually making this money. If you're making enough money to make ends meet and it takes you 10 years to hit that magical number, it doesn't matter whether it takes you five years, whether it takes you one year, whether it takes you 10 years, it's going to be worth it. And so for me, that was a big thing with like with imposter syndrome is like also as I got older, I just saw more and more examples of like you just realize that like there's so many people that are trying. There's so many people that are trying to build a successful software company like Zenmade. There's so many people that are trying to build successful maid services or domestic cleaning businesses like everyone listening here like here today. And so the whole thing is there's always going to be outliers, right? There's always going to be people that will do it faster than you. And oftentimes, if you look at it, oftentimes they have some advantage that's acknowledged in like the fourth paragraph of the article, right? And that's not to take away from them, but oftentimes it's people that it's like, oh, they're like a third time entrepreneur and both of their previous businesses were like award-winning, like local bakeries named after them. So they launched this cleaning business and everybody knew who they were in like the area. Of course, they jumped out to like 40 or 50 K a month in pounds. And of course, like nothing wrong with that. But you find that a lot of these anomalies, they have some sort of like thing like that. And so, yeah, for me with the imposter syndrome, I just kind of looked at it and was just like, if this company at any point makes like a quarter million dollars a year, I never have to go work a job like again in my life if I like if I don't want to. So I don't really care how long that takes. And like luckily, you know, we you know, we blew past that. And I definitely thought that when we were making a quarter million dollars a year, that like I personally would be making a lot more of that money. And then, you know, being young, I discovered taxes and like there's other expenses in the business, you know, you've got to pay other people and like, you know, yeah, it definitely took a lot more, <laughs> a lot more than that at the at the end of the day, but you know. When I was young and hopeful, I was like, 5K a month, we're going we're gonna to live forever. You're going to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the key here, though, is it's, you travel your own road. Let other people travel theirs. You know, you'll take some people with you, won't they, that will support you. But, yeah, everybody's on a different journey, aren't they? Yeah. The way I, the final note on imposter syndrome is just, um, yeah, the, the way that I've like, thought about it is, like, everyone's like running their own marathon or everyone's like sort of playing like playing their own super bowl like every day is more like playing your own super bowl and like in life you're just like running like your own like your own marathon and like that's just completely different for like for for everybody and so if you're listening to this and you're disheartened because you've been working at it for three years and you're making like 1k a month or something like you know something like that right like the whole thing is you've you've already been working on this for three years that's not a sign that you're, that you're failing but it or, or, or it's not a sign that you're a failure but it is a sign that you probably need to change some things that like that that you're doing and so what life is about is it's about like working on being a better version of yourself you know today than you were like yesterday and when you're working as an entrepreneur 
that should mean running a better business and becoming a better, like a better entrepreneur. And so um, like, that's really the only thing that I think that you should be like focused on is, are you more capable today than you were yesterday? And if the answer is yes, and you stack up enough yeses in a row, then imposter syndrome won't matter. Fantastic. I love that bit of advice. Really, really helpful. Thank you. Now, that leads me quite nicely into, you know, I know you love to travel. Um, I love to travel too, but I know that you really love to travel. So I feel like you're a really brilliant example of the laptop lifestyle um, as it's termed. So how did you set things up so that you can travel and still have your business? Uh, so what's interesting is so like my co-founder and I essentially that was the goal from like from from day one. So like even though we were working on the business together in like in Palo Alto, we were working on the business every day and would just meet up every couple of days when we could and when it made sense. Um, he's much more into like deep work that he'll just like sit there like a monk for like 12 hours and just like code away without talking to anybody where like I'm like the kind of person that, you know, if I work for four hours and then don't go out to the bars in the evening, I like won't be able to focus the next day. So I like reset in a completely different way than, um, than, than him. But for us, our goal from day one was to have a a company that we could run from like from anywhere so we were just very particular about in the beginning of it's just like we're not going to do anything in person to like to build like to build this business it's like yeah i can go to a trade show if i want to go to a trade show and we can afford to like to send me there but like i'm not going to do any in-person demos i'm not going to like reach out to people locally like we're just going to be here but we're actually going to start out by reaching to people in florida on the other side of the country and that was for time zone purposes that for us like right now it's 7 a.m for me it's 10 a.m in florida so what we did was we would reach out to people in florida uh, and be sending them emails. And then I would wake up at 5 a.m. California time and begin calling people for two hours. I would call people on the East Coast where it was already 8 a.m. like for them. And then I would go to my day job. And like, that's how we started, like started the company. So our first like 100 customers came from, um, yeah, cold calling and cold emailing. Wow, that's that's determination. <laughs> Getting up at yeah, five yeah. a.m. to take account of the time zones. So, so, yeah. so tell me about life now. Then, how do you run the business now? From you know wherever you are. Yeah. So where are, where are you right now, for instance? So, so right now I'm back in, in California, actually. I'm uh, the house, house that I grew, grew up in, visiting my mom for for a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, to, to kind of uh, continue the, to, to answer the. the previous question and and that this one is so we've always hired people like remotely right that we didn't start hiring anyone in like in palo alto a because that would have been way 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 too expensive but then b because we weren't looking to build an actual office you know we wanted people who were just going to work from from like wherever they were so that's how we work to this day so now zenmade has close to 40 team members i think we have between 30 and 40 team members now that are across like across the world so like for example i'm flying to buenos us in about three weeks that I'm heading down to Argentina for the first time. And we happen to have three team members that are based in Argentina. I don't think we actually have anyone else that's based in South America. Like most of our team is based in, in like in, in Europe and then some are in like in, in America. And then for some reason, Buenos Aires specifically has three people. Um, and I don't know if they've ever met, like they're not friends or anything like along those lines. So, um, yeah, so, so right now I've just worked traveling around the, um, around the world since 2015. So eight years now that I've been doing that. And so initially I went to Thailand and kind of like bounced around the world to places that kept my expenses really low. So it was actually to help me to build Zenmade that for a while there, I paid myself a thousand dollars a month and then Zenmade would cover my flights, but I would only be, be bouncing around on like budget flights and only to places where my accommodation was already taken care of, right? So I was like doing like the backpacker thing to just like put as much money back into into zen made like as possible and then now like that's changed like that's changed a lot so like my wife and i like the first year that we were dating i think we did 13 countries or something in like a 12 month like a 12 month period and then since then we've slowed down a lot but um we are moving to brighton so fun fact for the uk listeners that are uh, that, that that are here my, my wife is actually already uh moved into and like based out of out of brighton and so i'm just waiting for my uh my uk 
spouse will be so to uh, to come in and then i will be i will be in brighton so i, I might be seeing you guys at conferences and everything that would be amazing yeah well welcome to the uk when when you you, you get your your visa sorted so that's brilliant so i think, it, I think yeah. you about that a little while ago that that was in the in the pipeline so that's brilliant that that's that's happening so, so yeah. in the last 12 months where have you been you know what what have you been up to so last last 12 months I feel like have actually been like pretty pretty boring um I've pretty much just been uh between like Thailand the UK and the US I don't think I've really been been anywhere anywhere else um yeah the past past year or so we've just been trying to keep it to places that were like that we're familiar with uh because we were we were sort of trying to settle down in Thailand and then decided on like the UK and so um yeah haven't haven't done like done done too too much um we did actually do so so actually a cool thing was this year we managed to do team retreats that we got parts of the Zenmade team together in Scotland and in Thailand so that was that was actually was was really quite cool but previously we've done um we've done like morocco uh we've done spain um a couple places in the u.s so like as a team we sometimes get to go places like together oh brilliant oh that's that's brilliant for team building isn't it do you ever invite guests i'm sure louise and i would love to go <laughs> <laughs> we we have we, we brought out we brought courtney wisely actually she used to be with the zen made team but left a couple of years ago to work um to work like on her on her own stuff still like still industry related but she she joined us for one so i'll let i'll let you guys know um <laughs> i i think you, you've got you probably got some some good hookups in uh in, in france so yeah um, absolutely you know we we could talk we could talk <laughs> so so tell me what are you most excited about for 2023 so 2023 so uh it's, it sounds kind of weird it's like we're going we're going into a recession i think that like a lot of people are seeing that that it's like it's tough to hire right now and like um you know i mean just just business is really like tough right now but i think that like if you if you make it out of the next, you know, 12 months, 12, 18 months, who knows, like, um, it's going to get a lot better. It's going to feel a lot easier that like, it, it, I just think that in the next, like, maybe like three to six months, it's just going to start feeling like things are easier because you're going to have more people that are finally like, okay, I need to get back to work. Right. So all of a sudden you're going to have more folks that are like, that are hiring again. Right. Um, you're going to have just more money sort of like flowing again. So I, I kind of feel like, you know, the next like maybe six to 12 months are going to be quite like quite slow, but it's like, if you can build a business that survives during like that time, you're going to really, really be able to, uh, to thrive coming like, coming out of that and honestly that's kind of how we're looking at like at, at zen made that zen made we're like we're contracting like a, a little bit we're um we're really just focusing on the product so that's what i'm really excited for for us like personally is um specifically on the mobile side we're really going to be ramping like ramping things up making our um, our true mobile apps uh like on par with um with like the actual zen made uh web apps so that you can do everything that you can do in the web app you can actually do from the mobile app like natively we've been asked for for that for for a long time uh and a couple of like of, of other of other things but we're very much looking at it as like it's time to focus on um on the product kind of ignore like ignore everything else and just make sure that like everything is as solid as humanly possible because very very soon people are going to be expanding again and when they're ready we want to be ready to like to expand like expand with them and so yeah that, that's what we're looking forward to in 2023 yeah and i agree i think long-term demand in the industry is going to be really good it might just be a difficult few months and yeah if guys like you are gearing up as well to make sure your product works really well as everybody gets busy again then um yeah fantastic is there anything else yeah. in the pipeline at zen made we should know about in the next few years um i would say the main thing that i think people will be excited about is so we are going to be adding in um like a pretty big variety of probably both both email and SMS communications, but definitely SMS communications that we've realized just how popular those are that as long as you're using SMS 
for transactional messages, as long as we don't overstep the line into marketing messages, um, the transactional messages just get such a high read rate, such a high um, like engagement rate, right? Um, so like a lot of people have been asking us, you know, hey, like, can we can we send people the SMS um, or send the people their invoices by SMS? Because for a lot of people, they can just click on it, right? And it would make sense for us, like if we if we set that up, it would make sense for us to add in like Google Pay and Apple Pay because most people these days have that set up on their phone. So we can make it as easy for ZenMade customers as, you know, you send them an SMS, they click this thing, they click Apple Pay and boom, like they're done, right? Or they, they add in a tip and like they're done, right? And so um, that's like one thing that, that, we're, um, that, that we're looking at, but we're looking at adding in like, you know, that's an example around invoicing and around like around SMS, but we're planning on adding in a bunch of other SMS, um, just like reminders and like, and stuff, stuff like that, uh, because a lot of those have been, um, have been asked for. And uh, what else? Um, that's pro probably like the, the 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 main the main things. I think we're also looking at the um at at the booking forms again. That I think we're I think we're looking at, at redoing our um our, our booking forms or offering like another version of them that we think can be um can can be more like more, more effective. Um, and then yeah, expanding the free plan because that's going really well. So yeah. you know. Yeah, she launched the free, um, permanently free plan, didn't you? So there's an option to to just use it all the time for free, isn't there? You launched that was it yeah. last year or was it the year before? I think it was the year before. I think it was. I think it was in 2021. I think yeah. so. Yeah, I think I think it was the year the year before. Um, yeah, it's been been about about two years now. So. So I yeah. suspect that if we looked ahead five years, there's going to be so many changes. Um, but you've you've certainly got a good few in the pipeline already. So brilliant. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, looking five five years ahead, what we want is we want ZenMade to be um like I almost have this like visual in my head of the way that you see on like Uber Maps, it like shows you kind of where the car is and where you're going and like how close it is and like and all that is like I'm thinking like just visualize that but imagine that instead of the car you have like a little cleaning van and then you have multiple cleaning vans around your service area and it would literally just show you at a glance like on your phone like this is where your teams are this is what they're doing this is how much money like they're making you or like costing you <laughs> eating lunch or like whatever right like i don't know like i mean that that's of course just one like one like little thing but we're very quickly like getting to the point that like we we could do like that that kind of um that that kind of stuff so um i don't know technology moves fast so it moves just, very fast these days it really really does doesn't it okay so i've got before i let you go amar one i've yeah. got one final question for you what's the one thing nobody knows about you that you're going to share with our audience okay so this is it's not something that nobody knows about me but i'm guessing it's something that nobody in your audience knows about me or would um or or would guess so my life goal is to buy a football club um, that there's, I think, 22 professional divisions of, uh, of football in, in England. And my goal is to just buy in somewhere on the pyramid that, like, if I survive for long enough, that someday could make it into the Premier League, whether it wow. takes 50 years. Yeah, so that's, that, that's probably, probably the one that people, people wouldn't, wouldn't guess. I've been a diehard fan. I've played since I was young. I coached refereed games, like, all of, all of that stuff. So... Yeah. I yeah. don't want to put I don't want to put people off you in case depending on what team, well, who's your who's your favorite team. So Arsenal and then I've started following um following Brighton since I'm moving to Brighton that I've started watching all of the uh, all of the Brighton games but um yeah I've I've liked Arsenal since they last won won the league I started following them like a year or two after that so like I'm not a bandwagon fan people I've been a fan of them for a <laughs> long time when they were I wouldn't say terrible but you know they haven't won it in a long time but I'm not a fan just because it looks like they're going to win it this year <laughs> yeah, no, brilliant oh I love that so yeah one so watch this space folks uh Amar's going to buy a, a football club in the UK at some point I have no doubt it will happen <laughs> yeah definitely uh can I just give people a quick uh, quick pitch on uh, on Zenmade before we uh, before we go 
Uh, yeah, just uh, if you guys are interested, like essentially ZenMade, we do scheduling for uh, for domestic cleaning businesses just like yours. Um, it's essentially, um, you know, as we've talked about here on this podcast, I um, I ran my own my own maid service and then spent a lot of time like in the UK. We spent a lot of time talking to UK business owners. So you'll find that the software is, you know, it is designed for like, you know, US kind of like kind of first, but you will see that we've put in a lot of effort um, to make it UK friendly um, as well. We have a free version that is designed specifically to just be clearly a better option for you guys than if you're using pen and paper or um, or even like Google Calendar. It gives you like a true CRM, true um, true like calendar program for you to actually use, and it is a hundred percent, a hundred percent like free. And then the paid version does you know communications, reminders, payroll bunch of other things that you guys should come and uh, and and check out jump on a call with our team and all that um but yeah there's a bunch of uh, dcbn members who, um, who use us the uk are actually our second biggest market recently overtook um overtook canada um actually quite a while now probably over uh, over over a year ago now the uk overtook um overtook canada so um yeah if you guys want to um, want to check it out there's a 14 day free trial we've got a generous like refund policies you can essentially use it for 44 days or so um without any like without any risk yeah fantastic Sign up at nice nice <laughs> pitch Amar. yeah and dcbm members get a discount as well after their free trial that's right even better that's right so uh, yeah so thank you so much Amar. and um, it's been fantastic talking to you about business about zen made about cleaning and and everything in travel everything in between and even a bit of football there at the end so um i love it um this has been um confessions of a cleaning business owner and if you like um what we do in our podcast then please subscribe like and share and i will see you on the next one thank you